Steve, it's obviously been a, you know, an emotional week for a lot of people in, in no football at the weekend. How, how do you feel being able to, to sit and announce the latest squad this morning? No, I think the first thing is for myself on, on behalf of everyone connected with the, the national football team to offer our condolences to the royal family on the on the death of Her Majesty the Queen. So I think that's the that's the most appropriate way to start. Absolutely. Um, in, in terms of your squad then, the headline I suppose yesterday from Liverpool manager Jurgen Klopp, no Andy Robertson confirmed by yourself this morning. How big a blow is that to not have your captain available? It's always disappointing to to lose key players. Uh, Andy's obviously a key player captain. Uh, big character for us within the squad. Uh, but as you, as you lose one top quality left back, you, you get another one back with, with Kieran being available this time. So I suppose that softens the blow. But you want all your good players there. You want all your players fit and available. But is one of the one of the poorer side of the international selection is that you know that you're going to lose players through injury, uh, and you've just have to, you've just got to deal with it. Is there an extra frustration there for so long? It was a great relationship fitting them both in, but you know, last time. Kieran was unavailable yeah. and Andy played and, and you're sort of choosing one or the other at the moment? Well, it gives myself and, and my staff lots of things to think about and, and, and hopefully come up with a, a way that we can we can show that we can play with one, both or either. It's the first time we've seen Ryan Fraser in the squad for quite some time. Tell us a little bit about that process and, and getting him back in. No, there's no real process with Ryan. I, I, I said, uh, I think it was in March, when he, we, he missed the two friendly matches, we'd had a chat. Uh, Ryan wasn't playing for Newcastle at the time, and, and I said at the time, if he's fit and available and playing well for Newcastle, he, he's definitely one that we, we have to consider for selection. That's why he's in the squad this time, because he's fit, available and, and playing well for Newcastle. So even as this first squad of a new season, how do you, you know, assess the form? So many different situations, like Billy Gilmore has moved yeah. club, of course. Uh, Nathan Patterson seems to be thriving at Everton. How? How confident do you feel about the, the form of your squad overall? Nah, some, are, some, are in, some are in good form. Uh, some maybe haven't had the minutes they, they want to have. We've also got Ryan Jack and Kenny McLean back in the squad, two experienced players uh, that, we, that we missed over the summer. So, Like I say, swings and roundabouts when it comes to naming the squad. Uh, it probably helps us a little bit that it's deeper into September this time where the squad gets together because normally it's, it's just at the very start of the season. So. A lot of the boys in good shape, uh, and one or two probably hoping that they're, they're going to get a few more minutes before we meet up, uh, and I'm certainly hoping that as well. Are you better equipped, Steve, for this campaign than previous times, even though in one of those campaigns you qualified? No, I think I think we're equipped as as well as we as we've always been. I've always said it's a it's a squad. I think that's that's progressed well over over my tenure. If I'm being honest about it, I think June was the first time where I felt as though we stopped. And now we have to pick up the, the mantle, if you like, and, and start progressing again through these, these three difficult matches. You spent most of your time uh, in the early part of being the Scotland manager chasing various players that might have been available to us to try and strengthen it. Um, it's got a familiar look about it now. Do you, do you spend as much time looking to see if you can unearth something that can... I think, I think you're always looking, you're always looking, you're certainly looking at the younger ones, the the under-21 squad, I mean, young Josh Doyle's gone out to Italy and he started well. Uh, on, on the other hand, Lewis has gone out to Italy, he's missed out in the squad because he hasn't had much game time. Uh, Elliot Anderson's in and around the first team at Newcastle, he's another one that's in the under-21 squad, so we're always looking, we're always trying to improve what we have, but also very happy with what we've got. Is there a greater learning curve when you come up against a team that effectively killed off their hopes? Do you have to really start to think about how you maybe change the way you approach? No, no, the, the way we work won't change. We, we always work the same. Obviously, this time we've got another three game, three games in seven days, so there's not a lot of time to prepare. Obviously, we've got the the funeral, uh, the, the royal funeral on, on Monday, which will curtail will work around that and make sure that we do get some time on the pitch while still being mindful of the the day if you like uh, but we will work as, as well as we can and we will prepare well and obviously we want to come out these matches in first place in the in the group and we've got everything in front of us but yes, well, we're in a position where we've got our destiny in our own hands, uh, and that, that's all you can hope for. So, we're looking forward to difficult matches, uh, good opponents, 
uh, and hopefully, like I said, we can. I felt that we stalled a little bit in the summer. It would be nice to pick up the progress again. Uh, Ukraine are a decent team, and <laughs> Republic of Ireland weren't too bad either. So we have to we have to go out there. We have to do better than we did in the summer, and we have to pick up the points that we need to to top the group. With regards to, to Billy, Steve is you know, obviously the connections to Chelsea. But were you pleased to see him move on to somewhere where he's probably likely to play more in the first team? He's not very lucky, Billy, is he? <laughs> 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 no, we, listen. We, I think I think Billy was set in his own mind that he wanted to play more football, uh, and he, he didn't feel as though he was going to get that chance under Chelsea. And obviously, football can change very, very quickly, as as, as Billy's found out. But he's he's got everything to play for it. Uh, Brighton, they're going to appoint a new manager. Uh, it'll be down to Billy. His performances in training, his performances in the matches, will dictate whether he whether or not he gets picked to play for Brighton. So it's it's, it's down to Billy to do that. So we've Larry. we've got him in the squad this time. We can we can give him a little bit of comfort when he comes up, and and I'm sure I know Billy well. He's, he's a good character. He's he's determined to make a big career in football, and and, and we know that he's he's one for us, and we'll give him every support he can. It's a learning curve for a young player, I suppose, as well, to to move for a manager and then for them to leave <laughs> pretty swiftly. Yeah, but the, the, this is this is the nature of football now. What Billy has to do is adapt and, and make sure that he impresses the next manager, Brighton. And in terms of to Ryan Fraser, was it just a question of him getting played and fit and playing in form again and nothing to do with any assertions people might have about his commitment? Yeah, that's correct. On Nathan Patterson and Aaron Hickey, two players that are getting a lot of game time at the top level and are performing well, it's great to see young players playing regularly in the Premier League. It's brilliant. It's great. Uh, really pleased for, for Nathan especially because I know he had a, he had a tough time uh, settling in at Everton. I'd, I'd spoken to Frank a couple of times. He was going to play Nathan at the end of last year. He picked up a quite a serious injury. Uh, he, he set the ground running this year. He's in the team playing well. Uh, doesn't surprise me. And hopefully he can stay in the team, keep doing well, and he, he gives us good options in, in the in the team as well. And a couple of years ago, if you remember, everyone said we had no fullbacks. We, we've got fantastic options. Ask questions, please. It was a matter of time before Nathan was getting in that Everton. I felt so. I, f I felt that was a, that was the case. I've, I've got big admiration for Nathan the way he plays. I think he, he brings a lot to the Scotland team, uh, and I'm sure that the people at Everton Football Club now are, are realising what he brings to their team as well.